Hey, stick around to the end, promise it'll be worth it. When I was a young Buckeye growing up, Easter Sunday was my Super Bowl. Sure, I hung up my cleats after learning about the whole pagan origin thing, but when I was still wearing the number one jersey, I was the undisputed MVP of the family Easter egg hunt. One thing you should know about me, I love hide and seek. Corn mazes, treasure hunts, ghost in the graveyard, you name it, I've played it and had the time of my life in doing so. But once you grow out of your teens, those kind of games don't really pose as much a challenge as they used to, so what's a playtime fossil like me to do? The answer, Perplex City. In April of 2005, a London-based game company by the name of Mind Candy began a long-term alternate reality game that mixed brain teasers and trading cards into a product unlike any other. Perplex City was the hide-and-seek game to end all hide-and-seek games. Story went something like this. In an alternate universe, there exists a utopia centered around mental and intellectual prowess, places called Perplex City. Their icons aren't athletes and movie stars, they're philosophers and scientists. Scientists. Their big game ain't about touchdowns and chicken wings, it's about puzzles and brain teasers. Within this city of wisdom is an artifact called the Ricada Cube that contains all kinds of mysterious electromagnetic power. One night, the cube in question is stolen from Perplex City Academy and is somehow transported to planet Earth and hidden. There's no way for the Perplex Seites, per Perplexians, Perplex people, the, the people of Perplex City, to travel to Earth in search of it, so they enlist the help of the citizens of Earth to find it. The point of the game was simple. Somewhere in the world was a cube. Manage to find it, and you'd receive a reward of 100,000 pounds sterling and bragging rights for the rest of your life. Sound cool? You bet your sweet jelly belly it was. Perplex City was the ultimate treasure hunt. It was an interactive mystery played out on a worldwide scale. It contained a cast of kooky characters, had live events, and promoted a message of cooperation and teamwork. It was storytelling on a level higher than traditional entertainment, and it didn't require an entry fee to participate. Just read the clues, head outside, and start the search. But if you wanted to spend a little money, Mind Candy had just the product. See, in conjunction with the treasure hunt, Perplex City was also a collectible card game. Just like Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, and Pokemon, the cards were sold in booster packs and divided into various sets based on rarity, but unlike those money vacuums, Perplex City cards weren't meant for competitive play. Each card was a puzzle. Find the solution to the card, enter it into the Perplex City website, and earn points. More puzzles you solve, the higher you climb up the website's leaderboard. In addition to the main puzzle contained on that card, hidden elements in various sets would lead to further information about the cube's location. This would lead to more puzzles contained on obscure websites, blogs, emails, what have you, which would lead to even deeper mysteries, expand the story's lore, and offer the most hardcore of puzzle solvers a bit of a leg up on the fly-by-night treasure hunters. I could spend all day talking about the intricate puzzle schemes and cool moments from the game, but you're busy people with moves to make and insightful YouTube comments to write, so I'll spare you the details. All you need to know is, the cube was found. The game lasted for almost two years, ending in February of 2007 when a guy by the name of Andy Darley recovered the cube and won the money. The story of how the cube was found is a great read, but it's Andy's story, so I'll let him tell it. You can find a link in the video description. The main point of this video is thus. I want more of this. Seems like nowadays, unless it's a movie, TV show, or video game, folks act like they don't have time for it. Perplex City stood out as a game that tried something different. It dared to tread new ground. I can't recall any other large-scale interactive game like this being played back then, or really even today. One of the reasons why might be that it's not profitable. I know that because Perplex City stopped after the cube was found. But it wasn't supposed to. Mind Candy had plans for a second season of the game, and they were preparing new cards. But midway through production, it was all cancelled. Maybe the game was too ahead of its time. Maybe it's just too outlandish an idea, a global treasure hunt. But for whatever reason, continuing the story no longer became feasible. To be fair, it wasn't a worldwide phenomenon. Folks outside of the UK likely didn't hear a thing about it. I know as an American, I just happened to stumble upon it one day. But somehow, someway, the game still stands in my memory as one of the cooler things I played.
Now, uh, let me be clear. I didn't live in the UK. I didn't buy boxes and boxes of Perplex City cards. I wasn't old enough to really be a part of the hunt. But I followed the game regularly and felt like just following the story made me a part of something better than your average video game community. Notice I said better, not bigger. Perplex City's smaller fan base might have added to the sense of companionship and fun people felt while playing it. It was a competition, sure, a hunt, there'd be winners and losers, but instead of becoming a cutthroat rat race to 100,000 pounds, it became a spirited environment of collaboration, cooperation, and morphed into a collective effort to find where that tiny cube was hiding. Maybe it failed profit-wise. Maybe a game like Perplex City just isn't sustainable in today's world. Although, I have to admit, with the rise of social media and apps on every smartphone, it'd be interesting to see how a game like it would work out a decade later. But Perplex City shows that a cool concept may not always become the next big thing. It may not provide a solid return on investment, but it can still provide great memories and an unforgettable experience for the folks who manage to be a part of something far ahead of its time. The truth is, I miss Perplex City. I miss the concept, the excitement, the possibilities. I miss the mystery. I miss the thrill of opening up a pack of cards and solving puzzles that seemed impossible at the outset. I miss the hunt. You know what I don't miss? I don't miss playing a certain video game, or reading a certain book, or watching a certain movie. I can replay, or reread, or rewatch any of those things. What I can't do is revisit Perplex City. None of us can. And that's what makes it special. At least, well, okay. About those cards. So the game's been over for 10 years this February, but two of the game's cards are actually still unsolved. One card admittedly has no answer. It asks the player to solve a mathematical hypothesis that I don't, I don't really get it, but I'm told by mathematicians and even the company that the card simply has no solution. But another card, this one, this one can be solved. It's called Billion to One, and the puzzle on the card is simple. It features the face of a man with a caption written in Japanese on the side. The translation is short, but to the point. Find me. Players tried to solve this card all throughout Perplex City's run. A worldwide hunt was launched back when the card was released. A few websites were set up to try and locate the man, but it's been 10 years. Those sites have been closed, and the hunt abandoned. Everyone who played the game has, well, moved on. The only real information anyone gained since the beginning of the search? His name is Satoshi. Probably. For their part, Mind Candy's lips are still sealed about the solution to this card. The man in question has never been found. One last mystery. I can tell you this. The hunt for the Rakeda Cube was one of the greatest hide-and-seek games you ever missed out on. The Billion to One card is, to me, the greatest hide-and-seek game that everyone has quit playing. So, dear viewer, I have a call to action for you. See this guy? Find him. Thousands of people over the course of many years have tried, believe me. They've all given up. But why call it quits before the mystery is solved? It's a worldwide game of hide-and-seek. We've been counting for over a decade. Ready or not, Satoshi, here we come. Like this song? That's Enroll off the new Comedy Noise LP, the better version. 1222 and it's all for you. Help fundraise the future. And if you like the video, subscribe to my channel for more. Or don't. I don't really care. <laughs>